Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jacqueline Shaw and I'm here to talk to you today about your body's agenda. And all of our bodies have an agenda, all of our bodies have an internal rhythm and we call this the circadian rhythm. Now there's different types of rhythms. Obviously we have the biological idea and construct of this rhythm and we also have Chinese um, circadian rhythm and we have Ayurvedic uh, circadian rhythm and we're going to talk today about biological as well as Chinese circadian rhythm. So what is circadian rhythm? It's a natural internal process that regulates the sleep-wake cycle and repeats roughly every 24 hours. So inside of your body you've got this whole system heading on working these organs are working in in this in tandem with this timeline inside of your body and we notice that these systems are biological processes that are endogenous and trainable oscillation and so um, endogenous means um, it's originated internally and entrainable means that we can train it so in other words if you go from New York to California your biological clock can change and um, it will change with the season and it will change with where you go, where you travel to. One thing that I think is really interesting is the study of fatigue in um, people who work on airplanes because they're constantly shifting their circadian rhythm as they go from one uh, state to another or one country to another. And when they do this, it ends up making them very tired because they're resetting their circadian rhythm over and over again and the body's just fatigued. It needs to have stability in order to establish itself. Then we have oscillation. Um, th this is an electrical current of non-mechanical means. So there's, there's this like electricity in our body that is just occurring naturally. And it is definitely feeding off of cues from the environment. We're going to talk about that as well. So if you look at the word circadian, circa means around and dia means day. So around the day, there's certain cycles that happen. Although these rhythms are built in, they can be entrained to local environments, like I said, using light cues. So if you want to jumpstart your circadian rhythm, as soon as you wake up, and we're going to talk about when you should wake up, but as soon as you wake up, look out the window. And within five minutes of looking at light at that light, you will jumpstart your rhythm. So what is circadian rhythm? It was basically discovered that there was these processes going on inside the body a long time ago. But recently it was more proved that there are proteins that turn on and turn off certain processes and that these are and that these these are definitely photosensitive proteins. Um, and so these proteins protect the DNA from ultraviolet damage. And because they're turning on and turning off, because we, we shouldn't be in the sun for 24 hours a day, um, if, if we were and if we were exposed and if we didn't have uh, protection, um, it, it would create a lot of random mutations and things going on because the sun does that. It catalyzes these types of reactions. And some believe that rhythms were evolved to prevent damaging redox reactions. So why were these proteins developed to protect our system? Some people believe that it's because to protect the DNA, others to protect um, overreactions happening and, and re, uh, redox reactions happening. So these rhythms show up in all our organs as well as a single cell. They are happening on very small scales and large scales. Okay, and um, let's talk about chronotherapeutics. And this is the idea of timing when we take our medicine, when we take our drugs um, to treat certain illnesses based off of our circadian rhythm. And you'll notice that when you take um, penicillin or whatever it is, it will say what time of day you should take it, how often you should take it, right? And you know, that, that sync in with your rhythm. Now, if you have 
a, a really strong circadian rhythm, you'll be able to take on that medication and you'll be able to really, it will really be able to help you if you take it at those certain times, but everybody has a certain rhythm. Now, if somebody takes that medication and say it says, you know, just take it early in the morning and, and late at night and say they're going to sleep at five o'clock in the morning, their rhythm is completely off to what is proposed by, um, by the doctor, right? So it's something to take into, into consideration. Power naps definitely affect your circadian rhythm. Power naps do not offset your rhythm. However, they can decrease stress and increase productivity. So they, they don't affect unless you have taken a nap for a very long time. So for example, if you take a nap in the middle of the afternoon, which is actually recommended well, as we look into this, but if you take a nap that's extensive and it seems like a sleep, if you've taken a nap for more than 30 minutes or for more than two hours, you might offset your sleep pattern at night. You might not be tired enough to go to sleep at night because you've gotten so much sleep from that nap. A nap is supposed to be short-lived, okay? Abnormal circadian rhythms can result from patterns that have been offset in your circadian rhythm. So if you're going to sleep way too late and you're waking up way too late, <laughs> um, your body is not getting enough light and all the cycles that are supposed to be happening are not happening because they are built around the light. They're built around your photoreceptors in your brain. So some issues that could happen when you are not sleeping right, or when you're not um, doing ac activities um, in the day that really work with your circadian rhythm and actually might work against it, is you might develop particular activating system issues. And these are issues with your consciousness. You might lose your memory. Um, you might feel fatigued. Um, you, uremia uh, could happen. That means a large waste in the blood can happen if you're not really considering these cycles. Um, azotemia, which is high urea content in the blood can happen. Acute kidney injury, again, because the kidney needs rest in order to, well, it, it needs to be in, in rhythm. It needs to be in your rhythm and there has to be healing being done in order for it to do its job. But if we're overexerting our energy and we're not understanding the pockets of energy that we need in order to get what we need to get done, done during the day and rest during the day and at night, um, then the kidneys will be affected. And when the kidneys are affected, we have waste in the bloodstream. And when, there was, when there's waste in the bloodstream, we're not gonna be healthy. <laughs> That's not a healthy thing for, to happen. So indoor lighting. So roughly speaking, the effect of morning light is that it advances the clock. I had mentioned this before. Now there's something that comes from your computer screen and it's considered a blue light. You know, blue light will keep your brain up, right? Um, and the same thing with white light, okay? Certain lights hit the, hit the retina and then all of a sudden your brain wakes up. Now, if you don't have blue light shielding glasses on while you're looking at your TV or your computer at night, then you will probably have a hard time sleeping, okay? Um, and so within five minutes of looking at the light, you will start your system. Um, and so light is, light is important. Um, and it says exposure to bright white light can reduce disease-related fatigue. So we do need light. We definitely need light. And there are certain lights that are being developed now that are friendly to our circadian rhythm and keep us in the flow and kind of work with us through the rhythm of the day. And that's actually being advanced and that's something to look into if, if you're interested. Weed chips. So this is a, a research that, that I had looked up and that I had seen and it really intrigued me. People were losing weight. They were losing weight if they changed their, their rhythm of eating. So for example, if they wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and usually their last meal is at like 10 o'clock when they're eating snacks, right? 
then they decide to change it. And instead of um, their last meal being at seven, because they're waking up at seven, that's seven, that's 12 hours, their last meal was at five, right? And it was 10 hours. They started to lose dramatic weight because it should take, and your biggest meal should be breakfast, it should take about 10 hours to digest all of that. And then also all that, that energy, that excess energy needs um, to repair your tissues. Now, if you're trying to digest your food while you're sleeping, that takes extra energy and the other things that need to happen are not really going to be happening uh, with full force energy. And that, that takes into consideration healing certain organs that are going to be activated at night through this cycle.